You might be familiar with DNA structure being this double helix. We're going to get into a little bit more detail of just explaining the structure or what does this actually, what are some of the components that give DNA this double helical structure? So starting with the discovery of the structure, well, DNA specifically is made of nucleotides. Each nucleotide has a five carbon sugar, as we see here. There's a phosphate group, which has a negative charge, and then an organic base, in this case, based on nitrogen. Now, discovering the structure of DNA, there's two main types or two classifications of these nucleotides. We have the large bases, the purines. They're known as adenine and guanine, uh, abbreviated with the letter A and G. And we have a pyrimidines. These are smaller bases. You notice these only have one ring and the purines have two. The pyrimidines only have one ring. There's cytosine and thiamine, assuming we're talking about DNA. For RNA, we got to remember uracil is only found in RNA and thiamine is only found in DNA. Uh, cysteine is found in both. Now, what's important to remember is that a purine will always bind with a pyrimidine. Uh, and we're going to see exactly how that occurs. So our uh, purine binding with this pyrimidine, how does this look? Well, here's an adenine with a thiamine. A binds with T. Um, they have two hydrogen bonds between them. G and C will bind together. Guanine and cytosine have three hydrogen bonds. So they hold their structure just a little bit stronger than between A and T. How I try to remember it is G and C both have these kind of semicircle curves to them, so they would fit together very nicely. They have a stronger bond because they have three hydrogen bonds versus adenine and thiamine only having two. Keep in mind this is about DNA, so if we look back for a second, um, adenine binding with thiamine, well adenine would bind with uracil if we were talking a double-stranded RNA, which does occur. Now, ribose compared to deoxyribose. So look at the second carbon for H and OH. Well, this is kind of the area we're looking at comparing ribose with um, deoxyribose. So deoxy simply means without oxygen. It has just a hydrogen. Ribose has an OH group. Now ribose stands for, uh, is responsible for RNA, which is ribonucleic acid, deoxyribose DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. So here with DNA, we see that kind of second carbon there, deoxy without oxygen. Here's ribose with oxygen. We can see that oxygen um, atom right here in the structure. Now, key observations about DNA, uh, Rosalind Franklin uses X-ray diffraction experiments to reveal that DNA had the shape of a coiled spring or a helix. So this is kind of looking top down at it. You could see kind of that coiled appearance. We kind of put it in that 3D rotation, but this image is kind of looking down and this kind of gave the first indication that DNA may be this spring look or this kind of helical shape. Watson and Crick get the, uh, uh, the accolades for kind of developing the double helix official structure, um, though they based a lot of it off of Rosalind Franklin's uh, research. So Watson and Crick kind of came up with this idea and they used kind of uh, Tinker Toy models to kind of develop this structure that it was this helical um, shape, this double helix component. Now two strands of DNA are held together by weak hydrogen bonds and they have complementary pairs. So as I mentioned, um, a purine and a pyrimidine binding together, those are an example of complementary base pairs. A binds with T and G binds with C. Those are complements uh, to one another. We see that here, G binding with C and A binding with T, two bonds and three hydrogen bonds. Now when I talk about that complement, we're talking about the original sequence and the other sequence. Well, it is not an identical sequence, it's a complement. A binds with T, T binds with A, A binds with T, G and C. This is what I mean by when I say a complement. Each chain is complementary or a mirror image of one another. So either it can be used as a template when a DNA goes to um, produce itself again to do that process of replication. Now working with DNA, there's many different ways uh, scientists will work with DNA, just a couple. Um, there's PCR, polymerase chain reaction amplification, where we're upregulating a small section of DNA um, to be used and run through potentially a gel. And DNA fingerprinting, used to identify particular individuals or specific sequences uh, within a genome.